Okay, good morning. Thank you very much for um, joining me today on the Saturday morning. I know there's like a hundred different places you could be, you know, with all the year-end sales. You know, maybe think, some of you think of having dim sum. You know? <laughs> but thank you very much for uh, taking time to be here. And uh, I hope you had your morning coffee. Yeah. Uh, fully awake. Yeah. yeah, all right, okay. I also like to thank the star for um, inviting me. Uh, together with the team, we actually have planned an interesting program for you today. Um, besides my talk, there were, as she met, Sel Selena mentioned, there will also be a um, live demonstration of uh, two hacks uh, at the end of the presentation. What will those hacks be? I won't be telling you. No, this is like company lucky draw. You have to stay till the end uh, before you find out. So do stay till the end and after that, the demonstration will be next door in uh, the other room. Okay, all right, first things first. I think everybody in this room really wants to know one thing, which is, how do you pronounce I-K-E-A the Swedish way, right? Okay, so I-K-E-A. So I've gone to Sweden and I've come back and I've got the definitive answer okay, from the Swedes themselves. Okay, and they say it's called I Ikea. Ikea. Okay, say it with me, Ikea. Ikea. Okay, very good, Ikea. Ikea. <laughs> okay, so there's a oh, at the back, okay. So uh, that is how they say Ikea. But Americans, as usual, they would call it Ikea because they have a language of their own, okay. <laughs> and, but us Malaysians, as they say, we also don't chop shui, okay, <laughs> so we can't lose. So we also have our own way of saying it and we call it Ikea, Ikea right? <laughs> okay, let's go to Ikea. So I call it Ikea too because it's like my hometown, Ipo. And um, you can't call Ipo, right? <laughs> so it has to be Ipo. It's like you order Ipo ho fun. Okay, so now let's move on. Do you love or hate Ikea? Show of hands, who loves Ikea? Very good. Who does not like it very much? Oh, why are you here then? <laughs> okay. But most of us uh, enjoy Ikea somewhat, maybe the meatballs or the ice cream. Um, so, so, before I became a full-time blogger, I also spent 10 years in advertising. So besides home decorating, I also like um, advertising, branding and all that. And, and IKEA is not, just, it's not just the products that I like about IKEA. I also like the, uh, the brand itself. And uh, because it's a very quirky brand and it likes to uh, make fun of itself, like this. You get it? Oh, I know it's a bit early. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> if you have the hex key, right, don't send it back. Okay, it's, it's correct. Or this, free snowman. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have this product here, okay? And uh, for the most parts, for the most parts, I, I love IKEA. I enjoy IKEA very much. Uh, but there are some things that I don't... There's one thing that I really don't quite like very much, which is their shopping trolley. Okay, Let me tell you this experience that I had uh, quite some time when I went to IKEA and I wanted to buy this um, Expedit bookshelf. So it was a 2 by 4 Expedit. I'm not sh sure how familiar you are with the IKEA range, but it's quite a big bookcase. And I went to IKEA alone. That's the rule number one. No, don't ever go to IKEA alone. Okay? So anyway, you know, you have to write in it with a little pencil, you know, in a little paper, which aisle that you have to go and pick up that bookcase. So I, I got my trolley. I pushed it all the way there. And then I saw, oh gosh, there was this huge box on this shelf. And uh, you know, the best thing about IKEA is when you buy anything, they give you a free workout. Okay, so... <laughs> Because you have to carry the furniture yourself. Okay, so I went to the, 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 
the shelf and there was this huge bookcase. And then I had to like pull it out, nudge it out from the, from the shelf. And as I was pulling it out from the corner of my eye, I saw that my cart, the one where you're supposed to put the bookcase on, was like slowly running away, you know. <laughs> and I was holding the bookcase halfway, and then my cart was running away. And then that was when I realized I have to go to the next part of my workout, which is the stretching, okay? Then you have to like oh, try to get your bookcase in your cart and hold on to the bookcase at the same time. And when I finally got the, the bookcase, uh, the cart back, pull down the bookcase, and when you have to hold your, you know, you have to step on the, book, the trolley with your leg like that, pull it down, and slowly push it into the cart. And uh, so that, that is really one of the things that I don't like about IKEA, okay, is that you have to fight with the cart, okay? Um, so I was telling my, one of my friends about this uh, runaway cart problem that I had. And she told me, oh, there's already a hack for that. And I was like, what? I mean, my eyes at that point in time is not very big, but at that point, it went double the size and said, oh, what? There's a hack for that? I mean, I was shocked that I didn't know about it. And she said, yes, there is a hack for it. And it's called a husband, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, thank you very much for all you husbands out there, you know, who's helping your wives and your sisters and, and your mothers and whoever, and that helping them to carry all the bookcases and the heavy things from, from the IKEA. And if you ever see me there struggling with my card, please come and help me, <laughs> or any other single ladies out there, okay? Okay, let's move on. What is IKEA hacking? Who has been to my site? Okay, thank you very much for visiting my site. Uh, IKEA hacking is basically a repurposing or a modification of an IKEA item. So you take uh, an IKEA item, and if you use it the way it is meant to be, then it's not an IKEA hack. But if you use it in a different way, or you change it somewhat, then it can be considered an IKEA hack. So for example, so if you buy this magazine holder, Okay, so I thought it was called enough. Okay, so, but when I was in Sweden, then I was trying to tell them about this, all oh, this, you know, coffee table that they made from this enough magazine holder and all that. And then uh, this Swedish designer, she was looking at me, you know, with this glazed look on her eye and like saying, what product is she talking about? You know, and then that was when she suddenly, oh, you mean a canoe? Okay, so this is called... <laughs> A canoe, okay, it's not enough. So I stand corrected. So if you have this canoe magazine holder and you put your files and your papers and your magazines into it, this is not a hack, okay? <laughs> but if you take the very same canoe magazine holder and you turn it into this, which is a coffee table, it's a hat. So you see the difference? All right. So this was the winner of the IKEA hack of 2012. Okay, so this is a very interesting table because you can actually, because the canoe actually comes with two uh, magazine uh, holders in one. So you can actually take out, uh, that's my pointer, you can actually slide this, this inner one out and you can actually change the shape of this table. So this guy actually is from Singapore, and he did this very beautiful table. So how did I start uh, this whole journey of compiling IKEA hacks? Um, it all started with, as, as Selena mentioned, when I was researching uh, inspiration and ideas for my own apartment. Because I've always been interested in home decorating. So even when I was renting a room, I always uh, made the effort to decorate it, to make it comfortable and cozy for myself. So when I had my own apartment, so I was, um, when I bought my own apartment, so I was looking for ideas and I was going to very, a uh, lot of different home decorating sites. So on one of the sites was where I saw this guy. 
uh, did something which set me on this path. Okay, so he took this Pax wardrobe, the sliding doors, the, just the sliding door, no, not the wardrobe itself. And uh, he added the Stolman pose. Okay, so the Stolman pose is also a um, storage system. And what he did was he came up with this, which was actually a, which is actually a room divider. Okay, it's not a wardrobe. So he had he lives in a studio, so he actually partitioned his studio with this Pax sliding door as a room do divider between his living room and behind here is his bedroom. So when I saw this um, hack at a, on apartment therapy. That was when, uh, for the first time, you know, I saw possibilities. And this is like because from my experience with all the Kedai Perabot, you know, uh, and uh, different furniture stores in Malaysia, if you bought a wardrobe, it's just a wardrobe. It came the way it is, you know, it's fixed. It's, it's something that you expect it to look the same as, you know, in the store and in your house. But when I saw this, then it, it dawned on me that, hey, furniture does not have to remain the way it came. You can actually change it totally. It doesn't have to be the same. Uh, or what the designer intended it to be in the first place. So that was uh, the start of it. And, and what happened was, uh, I was curious, very curious. Uh, I was thinking, Okay, maybe if Wins, who is the guy who, who did this, could do something like this, perhaps there are other people who actually did something to their IKEA furniture as well. So that was when I started to thank God for Google, you know, <laughs> and I started to Google and I spent uh, quite a few nights, you know, looking for uh, different, different hacks because I was just curious to see what other people have done to the IKEA. So I think it was um, a couple of nights later, then I found that I had maybe about 10 different, I found about 10 different hacks. And that was when I realized that um, I, uh, I had something that was very inspiring, very interesting. And personally, as an IKEA fan, I, I was very excited about those uh, ideas that I saw. And because I was very excited and I realized that I'm sure other people, other IKEA fans out there would find it equally inspiring and exciting. And that was when I decided that why not put them all in one place so that no one else has to spend five nights looking for these 10 hacks, right? So that was when I thought, okay, let's put them all together in one place. And that was when I started IKEA Hackers. So in 2006, with my fantastic design skills, I <laughs> started this very, very simple site on a blog spot. And uh, about two years ago, I came to terms with my lack of design skills and finally hired a designer to program my site. And this is how it looks today. Okay, so, um, so that is uh, briefly how my whole site started and I do encourage you to drop by and if you need ideas for hacking, do visit IKEA Hackers. And to date, uh, we have I think more than 4,000 now, probably about 5,000 hacks that have compiled over the last eight years and it gets about 8,000 visits a month and uh, over the last eight years, 32 million people have dropped by IKEA Hackers. I hope you will be one of them too, okay? <laughs> and um, 